Hello, and welcome back, my friends. That's right, we're back for a whole new day and more fun and excitement in our Toehold on Eternity world, playing hardcore vanilla Minecraft. I'm glad you joined me. Thanks so much for stopping by. We, uh, we've got a lot to do, because uh, if you're a uh, if you're following Habbage on Twitter, you know that last night in uh, my semi-food coma state, I tweeted out with a uh, link back to the first episode of This World, uh, back where we got everything started, that uh, there had been a massive, massive... Um, oversight and i mean honestly that's all it was it was all me um but i totally one of the uh one of the advancements totally slipped my mind we talked about it uh way back it's it's kind of a fun one to do um and for whatever reason i, I just you know forgot and uh, wasn't thinking about it and so here we were cruising along going like, oh yeah, bring on 118. Now we've got uh, Uneasy Alliance done. This room we're just kind of finishing up. And I was, I was seriously um, looking at a bunch of different things that we can do to help us get closer or, you know, start to be thinking about um, the how did we get here advancement for once we've got 18 and you know we've got our uh powder snow and all that um we could be doing that at the same time that'll just be exploring so i would imagine we're going to get that one first and then uh keep working on how did we get here but see these are these gassed fireballs um but we won't be up high anymore so i think we're done having to deal with that i hope um uh, yeah but anyway we we totally forgot about how do we get here so the plan for today or you know as far as we go whatever the the amount of timing is we are going to use up this pick here trying to clean up uh, as much of these remaining uh ceiling tiles but this should go that the pick will decay fairly rapidly as well. I did get all those. Um, but we're also going to be... going to repair all four of the picks, and I think we'll do just the same thing that we had done previously. It worked very well. And that is... Oh, you didn't drop a thing for us. Where's the other one? Maybe it's outside. No, oh, there's one. Really? No! Hey! Look, not nice. And still nothing. Sheesh. Okay. This is what we need to kind of try to avoid. And it's why I was doing short sides instead of long sides. If we go... Uh, on the long runs all the way up and down the room uh, will give more opportunity for uh, gas to spawn as we're just trying to go back and forth and clean this up. So we uh, we use up this pick. That'll get us probably pretty close but not done. Then we go repair with lava slimes. Then it's going to be... Uh, uh, the missing mom. And did anybody guess it from the the tweet. Was that a skelly? Sounds like it. So he must have walked off the top. This is always the oh, hole. Thank you. Um, yeah, we got, got one more to go. And my hint in uh, Twitter, so you guys can play along as you're watching. Not that... Uh, <laughs> You can just guess it. If I, I don't think I've said it yet, and if you didn't see the tweet, well, um, there's no point in commenting or anything, so I'm going to say it here pretty shortly. But the hint that I gave in Twitter was, uh, oh 
man, can I remember what I, I said? Uh, something to the effect of, we forgot, uh, forgotten advancement, a hidden advancement. Uh, sounds like bad news. Hint, and then it was cow, pig, sheep. All, all, you know, one word with a period after each of those, and then goat? Question mark. Snow golem? Question mark. So I'll give you guys just a bit here to think. Do you guys know either from watching the series and just know what we've been missing, or? Uh, from that hint, um, what it is that we're going to be doing here in our upcoming episodes. Yeah, give it a little, a little head scratch. It's a fun one. Uh, just a little, little bit of setup, really. Um, but I'll share a little bit, and and some of those question marks were really because I, I'd, I'd like to kind of mix it up just a bit oh this is gonna get very fiery isn't it all right all right you first then you oh don't you dodge look at him moving no stop doing that I don't want to hit the Oh, so many holes we're going to have to deal with. And still no tears. We never did do that side either. One gun pump. Stop it! There's a tear. Right, this is the problem with running all around. This is going to be... At least we're close to halfway, maybe? Maybe not. <laughs> It's still a ways down there. All right. Back at it. Okay, so it's a little bit of time. Uh, you know, pause the video right now if you want to either scratch your own head or uh, or try to figure it out. Uh, but dun 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 dun. The remaining advancement that I had forgotten is a hidden one, and it's the Arbalist, I believe is what it's called. Um, and it is a crossbow advancement to kill five unique mobs with one crossbow shot. And so it, it's no, no question, you know, what's intended. Um, there's a picture of a crossbow on the little icon and... It uh, it says right in it, I think to uh, to kill them all with a crossbow shot, and that that's built around and was probably came out along with the uh, piercing enchantment. So piercing allows your crossbow bolts to penetrate the uh, penetrate through. Uh, mobs that you're targeting and there's there's kind of two things for this and, and I actually learned something in my my uh, remembering this because uh, I was kind of was kind of thinking I'm gonna do a few things um, to test that out things I've never done before and kind of show you what I think I remember as being a good way to um, get it if it's proven difficult for you in the past some of the things that I've learned uh, you know, it's not one that I do every day or anything like that, but I have learned a few tricks along the way that make it really pretty easy and fun. Um, so we'll do all that, but I'll try to... I'm going to be trying a few animals myself that I haven't before. I'm just trying to get this overhang done so we can kind of keep going on these short sides. And then we can start going. Oh, wow. <laughs> Zigzagging. This is why I'm glad we're not doing four blocks at a time anymore. All right. That at least cuts off that little back and forth. 
fourth pit. Oh. No, it's enough. At least hit the nether rack. So leaving a bunch of fire I gotta walk through now. Uh so anyway, yeah. We are good to go on those few things. Again, I think this is gonna be pretty quick. We may we may play around in here. Um once we're done with this and it's not annoying, we can just chase around with the gas. The skeletons will be done uh, as soon as we get rid of this section. They're just not getting any light up there so they can still spawn. Um, So, uh, the thing that I learned, I try to learn, learn all kinds of stuff, but things that I specifically learned, um, when I was thinking, okay, crossbow bolt, you know, what all can I do? And I was like, huh, well, unfortunately, we've made our Franny trade set up to arrows of healing, which are nice they they reverse right so you could you could do two things with arrows of healing um the first is that you could set them up with dispensers to kind of auto shoot you and give you health uh thinking the the scenario of a uh wither fight or something like that you know you could put up a thing where you're intentionally getting popped and the the way that you then set it up is that the damage of the arrow is minimal compared to the healing. What I never knew, um, never had a clue because I, I so you know I use the infinity um, enchant on all my bows, so I don't worry about um, the special tipped arrows. And, and really, other than that uh, that Franny trade, I've never really made any effort to get them even um, oh. we are way too far away from you but at least they didn't hit any ceilings oh they're blowing up my torches I didn't realize that <sighs> Just gotta keep pushing. Get all this done, and then it'll be easy to clean up. But we will have to figure out some better source of light. Because that would be a that would be an ongoing thing. Um, so anyway, the. You know, I'd been traded up Franny basically just to get emeralds, but it was like, oh, we can, we got a pretty good deal. We can pick a tipped arrow or something. I don't know how it, how it played out. Maybe that was just the offer, but they were these health tipped arrows. And I was like, oh, that's cool. That's one of two. There's arrows of harming and arrows of healing, and they're reversed, right? It's just like with potions. Um, if you hit an undead mob with an arrow of healing, it actually causes like a poison effect. Uh, same as the arrows of harming literally have a poison effect that they apply to uh, living mobs or ourselves. So I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. Let's let's have some of those and we can use them in a wither fight or whatever. What I did not know was that with those arrow tips, um, the healing and harming um, have like an, an aggregate damage. So they will look and see if the strength of your bow 
i.e. the level of power and chant on in our standard bow like ours. If that's, say, one or nothing, if it's nothing, then it'll just take the flat damage of the bow. I don't remember the value, but, you know, say it's five, right? And it'll go, okay, we can... Um, the max effect of healing or harming, uh, depending on which one you're going to do the damage to, is 12 points, or, or uh, 6 hearts, I think. And it will then, like, you know, calculate how much damage your bow is going to do, and just supplement that damage up to the 12 hearts, um... To make sure that those shots do do whatever that designated amount of damage is. But if your bow has like a, a power 3, 4, 5, like ours, we go max in chance when we're building our bows. Then it doesn't even apply any effect because your bow is already doing more flat damage with every shot than the maximum that would be added by the um, by the additional effect. So, um, it turns out we should have see it's here um, I, I don't know that we would have had any option but I think the best tipped arrow effect, if we wanted, you know, if we ever want to make another trader, Fletcher trader, the best option for us would be slowness. I think um, that would uh, give us a, a status effect that is actually handy and helpful. Okay, there's the middle. So we are through halfway, uh, but we're going to have to go and get these repairs done. That's why the gas are coming so thick and thick and heavy now. They want to they don't want to be left alone acting up. What is that? Are you me a tear though okay let's just go <laughs> this will go on forever oh but what about that block we must have just missed this i guess although i thought that gas was floating around with no no deal let's just assume that this was here uh was further down than where we started today so i didn't miss anything okay so we've done all that we dealt with the ghasts We've got good progress here. Just this much more to go. Uh, but as expected, we got to go repair. Yeah, I thought we had done a little, <laughs> a little bit of that going over. Um, we'll take stuff downstairs to dump. But let's put this and this away. I'm just going to hang on to these. Keep them going. Look at that. We're up to four dragons worth of... Uh, I'll just take the whole thing. Four dragons worth of tears. And we that doesn't count the ones that we have back in the potions chest, which I think... Does eight sound right? Do we have that many? We'll find out eventually, but... Dragons are not going to be a problem for us anymore. Uh, especially once that room is fully done. We don't have to worry about skeletons. Um, we'll figure out something with the lighting. And uh, be good to go. Alright. Well, this is... For the folks that didn't watch the two-hour uh, XP special... Here you go. You'll get a hopefully a much quicker version. So we cleared out this area. This is where, the space where we'd been getting blackstone for the build. Um, 
so we've got a lot of area with visible lava let's just go run the perimeter so that maybe some stuff will spawn and be cycling back and yeah this just gives us a chance to um, regularly harvest a bunch of lava slimes and magma cubes is their technical name but for me they're lava slimes uh, and I, I think this is pretty comparable to um, the overall ender farm rate maybe a little better we'll see uh, you know we were mining for much of that time just to get this area set up so uh, there wasn't just the constant you know I'm stupid <sighs> But it doesn't help at all if you don't have the pick in your hand, or in your offhand, to actually repair. But yeah, this just gives us a chance to run around and gather the XP as quickly as we can. Um, when we kind of get a jump on everything that's here, there will be periods where we're kind of like, is there anything nearby? Maybe here. And this is where... I'm going to do some clearing. We've tried to minimize the number of places where they can actually end up up above our heads but as you can see they can go up pretty high now I don't know if he's just pillaring to spite us wow okay come Come on, combat skills. I haven't had much of this coffee I just made. Um, so, I, I know we've kind of been, in the times we've just been chatting, been talking a lot about the advancements and all that. My, it, it just hit so hard, like, oh, man, we totally missed one. Um, that uh, I kind of wanted to talk about it to start. Um, but... For the American folks that uh, are hanging out, hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Um, I know it's, it's a fun day in uh, YouTube because a lot of people have stuff. Um, I, I I hadn't pre-recorded, but you know, folks that are traveling, I pre-record when I'm going on a trip or something like that. We'll figure out what I'm going to do around the Christmas holidays. But uh, yeah, for a lot of folks, you know, it's I'm publishing my content that's up or I have something set up to publish on Thanksgiving. And there's just a bunch of people on. I, I was trading comments with folks. There were messages in uh, in Twitter and all that. Really cool. And um, I know not everybody is in the United States, uh, but I think, you know, it's it's common enough around a lot of these channels, at least with, you know, the audience that I have, folks that have discovered me have watched other uh, U.S.-based creators, too. So um, folks are pretty aware of the holiday, and it, it definitely has more audience people because here in the United States, at least, work and schools are closed. So um, you got a lot of people with downtime that are just relaxing. You know, everybody's kind of... I, I had the same thing. I recorded my stuff. I got a little bit of stuff done in the morning um, outside of uh, Minecraft, YouTube, and all that. And then it was like, okay, I got like, you know, hour or so. So I was like, jump in the shower, get, you know, get cleaned up, make, make yourself all nice to go, go visiting on Thanksgiving. But then you're like, okay, now I'm all ready to go, but I can't leave yet. <laughs> if I leave yet, I'm going to be the the person that's uh that's too early like um what am i going to do for this time and so i found i was uh, definitely checking out content that uh 
I hadn't seen before, and that's always fun. You know, just like you kind of either search. I don't. I get frustrated with YouTube searches. Not that they're bad. Um, that you know they do really well at finding you good results. And if you're looking for a particular content type, they're great. Um, what I tend to get frustrated with it is I want to watch hardcore let's play style series and um, I don't tend to be on the um, watch a lot of somebody that's screaming and yelling and uh, you know getting all crazy because um, they died I you know I play hardcore so there there's a few there you know there there are the people that for some reason are like oh I'm gonna brand my stuff as hardcore and they're not playing hardcore version like they're not even in hard mode sometimes but usually it's just survivor and they're playing hard mode and it's like um yeah you're you're missing out <laughs> on what's what's going on um and I, I don't, we've talked about that before. And, you know, here in the wake of Thanksgiving, I'm just, I'm thankful that everybody has has the chance to create what they want to. And I found so many cool people um, and play styles and learn new stuff through, uh, through all of you guys. So thanks. But, uh, yeah, when I'm, when I'm searching in YouTube, when I'm just like, oh, you know, all my subscriptions, I've seen the videos, I've looked at them, and uh, I'm not, I don't have the time to sit down and watch, you know, like, there are, there are some series and playlists that I want to watch, and a lot of those fit my play style, where it's like, they, you know, the video lengths may be 18 to, 18 minutes to an hour, um, but you know, they're the, the, the like, Maybe some of them are beautifully cut and edited, but still, still that. But most show all the content, or when they are edited, they show they show the stuff that I think is relevant to the game. And you know that that's just about playstyle, right? There are um, there are people that certainly feel that you know the most relevant pieces are their interactions with other people on a server or something like that, and. Um, you know, and then there's folks that kind of come from that hardcore side. They're like, "Yeah, the a part of what you need to see is me being out, um, gearing up my supplies or where I'm going." And yeah, you know, uh, if I was doing things a little differently, maybe we wouldn't show all the clearing of the netherrack. But uh, it is it is relevant, and there's there's lots of ghasts coming at you and all that kind of stuff while you're doing it, and you. If you're looking for any series to help um, kind of show you, hey, I could never imagine playing in, in hardcore and getting that far. Well, you can. You, you just need to practice a little bit and understand you're going to die a few times along the way. And nobody starts out accomplished at, at anything. You know, you think the first time you played soccer or... Um, tried to ride a bike all right nobody just hops on a bike and is like i'm gone there's skin knees all over the place <laughs> for uh, back in the day it was training wheels now it's kind of those no pedal glider bike things uh, you know there's there's ways to help you figure out hey this is what balance feels like and this is how i get my confidence to to be able to do this so i've i've learned a ton from watching other people play hardcore and that's why i i like to the hey i'm not going anywhere feel free to jump around in my videos but i'm going to show you or i'm going to have it there so that you can see and when you're working on a, a bigger project like this gas hall you understand that there's there's a different bunch of threats now at the end of it just in the beginning of this episode we were dealing with all those gas spawning and, and you know shooting fireballs and taking out our torches and all that kind of stuff at the beginning, it was falling through holes in the floors. We're trying to clear out tunnels and define the parameters. And you only learn that to, you know, be aware that those things are going to change if you see enough of the play uh, to kind of get that. So 
That's my take anyway. That and it's just way easier to play and let you guys enjoy all of it if you do or skip forward if you don't. I'm not mad at you. if I, I do it all the time. I wouldn't be able to see nearly as many of, of um, the, the works that I'm a fan of if I watched every single minute of every one. But I love to watch the beginning. Um, then kind of, you know, if it gets to a point that it slows down, I'll kind of jump forward and, and watch the little slider bar as the, the background has changed. Ooh, that looks different. What's going on now, right? So... Don't ever feel bad about jumping around for that, but I do appreciate you guys being here in between and uh, and hope you enjoy. Um, so anyway, I was I was uh, talking about that chance to get to see more um, content and all the comments being traded around when uh, I was getting ready to go to Thanksgiving, and it's just a nice little you know it was like. 20, 30 minutes where I didn't have, I didn't have enough time to do anything else. Really, you know, it was like, if you start something, you're going to go, and I didn't want to, you know, I was looking good. I had a pair of slacks on, a sweater and all that. You don't want to get all wrinkled up or something or, or do something that might get you dirty um, right before you go. So it was, it was a nice little quiet time in the middle of my day. And then, of course, I... Um, came back home in the evening and after after just an awesome uh holiday meal and i hope i hope anybody here that was celebrating had the chance to have your your image or, or your conception of what a great thanksgiving was and that varies it's one of those holidays i think we we i talked about a lot yesterday that it's one that kind of everybody can get behind right there's um There's lots of others that that kind of vary, um, and particularly vary a lot in how they're how they're handled. Uh, and I'll I'll kind of I guess talk about it a little bit more. But you know, while Thanksgiving starts as a religious holiday, it's not specific to any any particular religion. Um, you know, here in America, the the idea of Thanksgiving is around this mythos that was built up of the pilgrims in Plymouth, Massachusetts, Plymouth Bay Colony in, in Massachusetts. They came to survive this, you know, brutal winter. And um, then through some neighboring interaction with neighboring native people, um, received gifts of food and then when they had made it through to a harvest it kind of reciprocated and said hey this is our now we've you know we've we've raised uh crops and and we've hunted you know this is we made it through the winter the people that did survive and it was brutal um but those that did survive hey we had this coming together and giving of thanks and that you know while the the pilgrims themselves were a very devout sect they had had come to the americas to um seek their own ability to follow their religious beliefs but the you know if you if you you don't have to you can accept that not everything about it is factual and still get the intent which is it was a bridging of cultural and and spiritual divides the pilgrims knew that the native their neighbors didn't share their religious beliefs and in that moment it didn't matter they didn't they didn't care they're like hey we're you know we're all getting together to celebrate that we're frankly we're still alive and <laughs> we made it through this winter that was so horrible to everybody else and while the the pilgrims you know may have been mostly focused on the uh the blessing at the beginning of the meal and saying hey you know Thanks be to God. It's you know, it's prov it's, it's that divine providence that has given us this good fortune in this new home. They also understood that the natives, you know, they they were not necessarily indebted to, but grateful for them. They you know, they hadn't been outright attacked, at least not by those people. And it's been a little bit since I've looked into all the the history, but. Um, 
you know, it, you can be grateful for your neighbors, even if you don't see, and I mean, that's kind of the deal of Thanksgiving, right? The, the wine starts flowing a little bit. If you're, if you're younger, you probably have cringed through some of these meals where the, uh, the older relatives and stuff, as the, the meal goes on, you, you start to pick up a little tension, right? Not everybody agrees on everything. And, uh, you know, grandma may, may have very different views from, uh, you know, uh, some of the grandkids or, uh, or even their parents, um, generations about what, what's going on. And then you, you know, you get in-laws, um, uh, that, that come with different backgrounds and that's, that's more pronounced as you get older, right? You know, you, um, you understand, you know, if, if you go over to your grandparents, you understand that's one of your parents' parents, right? And you may have aunts and uncles and all that from that same family. But let's say it's your dad's parents' house that you go to for Thanksgiving. Well, your mom's coming into that. She's She was raised differently, may have different traditions, may have remembered that, hey, in our house, we always had pecan pie, not pumpkin pie. Um, so you kind of have these, these bringing together. But then also you have at the table a little bit of, Oh, I don't, you know, I'm a Democrat, you're Republicans, and I think the <laughs> the state of the country or whatever is upside down, all that. Um, those things can heat up in, in the midst of it. I remember that from, from being a kid. And, you know, it was because we had a pretty open family that uh, everybody could kind of speak their mind and, and <laughs> get into you know, heated conversations that weren't angry. Everybody everybody loved everybody and was thrilled to be there, but you could still disagree, and, and that's what makes for lively conversation. So I think going back to the original kind of thing was you, you know that um, the natives in the, the northeastern um, New England part of the United States had dramatically different opinions and worldviews. They may not have even been able to do much more than sign, you know, sign a few things and, um, share a few understood words and, you know, things like laughter and smiles and all that rubbing the belly, like, Oh, I'm so full. Everybody understands those. Are, those are a universal language. So I'm sure it was a, a heck of a party back in the day. Um, but, uh, probably had a little, a little, little bit of tension, some misunderstandings, some, uh, uh, some eyebrows are raised at the, uh, the costume, not, not costumes in the sense that they had dressed up, but, uh, the attire, the, you know, the, um, the natives may not have been much dressed at all. Like our, our idea of, uh, Pocahontas from Disney movies and things like that, um, were, but they would certainly have been very dramatically different dramatically differently dressed than the uh, the pilgrims uh, you know who traditionally wore uh, black or at least subdued colors and uh, you know heavy thick uh, garments they weren't they certainly weren't into showing a lot of skin or anything like that you know that was back you showed some ankle <laughs> you're you're a really wayward person so uh, remember you know if you guys had had any friction with with a relative or something like that that's been going on from the very beginning it probably won't change we are at the slow point of this uh first pick where you get almost to the end and then you just gotta keep waiting those last little bits of durability to go Um, but yeah, I, I was really, really happy. Um, I got, uh, I think I, I'm, you know, I've certainly talked about this in, in past things, but if you're relatively new here, I, I live in Colorado. That's uh, where I went to university years ago. And, uh, my family is in the Midwest and that's where I grew up. So I do travel for some holidays, but I've never, uh, only maybe twice in the uh, uh, not quite 30 years that I've been out here have I gone back
back for Thanksgivings. It's an expensive time to try to travel. It's crowded and crazy. And um, uh, for a long time, that was the uh, the Friday after Thanksgiving was the big Colorado Nebraska uh, football game on the day after. So I never wanted to leave uh, town anyway. I always wanted to see that. Um, so I usually travel at the Christmas holidays and have been here. Well, you know, when I, after I graduated and came back and was getting Sarah, one of my friends, uh, you know, his, his family kind of adopted me as a young adult at the time. I was like, oh yeah, you know, you don't have family around you're Of course you're coming. You know, anytime I get like last year, I had the invite pandemic kind of, I was like, oh, I'm going to do my own thing. But anytime that, um, weather or anything has made traveling at Christmas, um, impossible, you know, or not, not feasible. Um, it's, it's just been automatic. Like, Oh, there, there's, there's no question. You're coming over. You're hanging out with us. So, and they, they do a big Thanksgiving, you know, multiple extended families. <laughs> and as the years go by, it just keeps getting bigger. Right. Because, uh, people all my age have now have in-laws and, you know, um, because a lot of a lot of people have, uh, you know, both husbands and wives, parents are all around. Everybody comes, and you know, it's it's not technically a potluck kind of deal, um, but it's it's kind of that. Everybody, you know, is like, oh, I'm going to bring something to to contribute and help out. But um, there are, you know, from the the woman who hosts it, who's kind of my my Colorado mom if you will um and then her her kids one of the, both of whom are my very good friends um but her son is who I went to school with and um he did a he did a smoked turkey um they did a cajun smoked turkey and an oven turkey and there was a ham so for a group of i don't know like 16 maybe um, there were four, like a full ham and three full turkeys. It was pretty much like everybody had a quarter turkey of their own. <laughs> if, if there weren't going to be any leftovers, it was crazy. And of course, all the dressing and potatoes and sweet potatoes, you know, and that was what I was talking about with the, everybody's got different traditions. Like one family, um, had always done this kind of orange jello salad type thing and you know it's kind of like oh everybody has to have a little bit of it but that that's always been theirs and um yeah just just awesome and then they it, it's so unnecessary and over the top and i'm not i'm not a big sweets guy and i actually i didn't even finish what i had um <laughs> i just got distracted and, and uh didn't get back to it but um then there's this like pie lineup, table of pie, and there was apple and pumpkin, of course, um, a strawberry rhubarb, and then this like chocolate caramel pecan craziness pie that I call the day record because as soon as you have some of it, you're done. It's like okay, you're gonna have like a little bit of a rush, and then that thing is curl up on the couch time. It's over. Um, this woman also uh, has horses. Um, she has one of her own and breeds another for and does like riding lessons for kids and all that. So we were, it's kind of cool. Like you, you know, you have the big dinner thing and then everybody kind of goes outside and the the kids help. You know, their mom is busy inside, so they help put the the horses away and the horses. And like <laughs> you don't know how to do this. <laughs> like my uh, my buddy gets all done and it's a. Uh, uh, his mom comes out with us. We're all kind of hanging out there, just, you know, enjoying the, it had gotten crisp, cool. It was a very nice day yesterday, but it got chilly as soon as the sun went down. And this is, we ate, you know, as the sun was kind of going down. So about five thirty, six o'clock or so we're out there and it's sun's down. It's getting chilly or, or going down and I need to switch picks. We, I need to switch picks in the box. <laughs> we're all hanging out there and he's like you know 
they're trying to figure out the food, and she's like, "Okay, I'll I'll come out and make sure that they get their their right food." What am I doing? Um, <laughs> she's like, "You have the horses in the wrong stalls." They each, you know, it's like a small barn. There's two horse stalls, one on either side at the far end, and then a uh, a hay stall in the middle where all the bales, you know. Uh, bunch of bales are stored they're easy access and they have a separate hay barn for the big storage kind of deal right <laughs> anyway <laughs> got these horses and he's like oh yeah did it they're all they're all in and they weren't like really being cooperative uh she comes out she's like they're not in the right stalls what are you doing <laughs> he's like how how was I supposed to know? Well, their names are written on the they're like painted artistically. Uh, the two horses and and one one is a different horse. She'd had two horses. One passed away years ago, so that one still has the old horse's name on. And um, but one is the same horse that it's always been. <laughs> it's uh like yeah, uh, you know bother to read but it was so much fun all these different people and being a part of a big different group and hearing everybody's you know memories are like oh what do you, you know what do you like to do and then we're you know talking about trips we've taken and, and all that kind of stuff just absolute blast so i hope that was that was a little taste of mine i hope you guys had uh had fun visits as well but like i said i didn't even get get through the pie i had a, a little bit of strawberry rhubarb and a little bit of pumpkin and uh, then I was helping move a table out um, of kind of a, a living room where we'd had overflow seating. And uh, by the time I got back, it, it was just kind of gone. And then I got hit with the allergies. Oh, man, they just, like, unloaded. I was like, I'm sorry, guys. I got to <laughs> – this is going to get ugly, but I got to get out. Um, thank you so much for having me. And, you know, some people were taken off, but, you know, it was – you're welcome to keep you know, having coffee and all that kind of stuff. You're welcome to stay. and but uh, I could feel between the the horses and the cats and the hay. <laughs> the, I like I'd moved this table, uh, this dining table, with another person, and you know he kind of like I got a sweater on and all that. I kind of like ooh, all right, that got me warm. I'm gonna go step outside and get get another breath of this cool night air. Um, and when I when I got back in, it was just like sneeze, sneeze. All of a sudden, nose is running, and I get you know I get feel the itching. I was like, I I gotta run and get some uh, get some Claritin or something. Uh, so I didn't didn't even finish up on the desserts or get kind of overloaded on that. But man, I was I was already so full. I'm glad I didn't do it. Uh, and it was kind of one of those those nights. I uh, I had planned ahead. I had a little bottle of ginger ale. Um, knowing that I, I don't really like soda. I certainly wasn't going to do like coffee or something that later that night. And well, I would just kind of sipped on some ginger ale, watched the night football game, and then I was out. And that ended like at nine thirty or something my time. And it was just do not pass go. No two hundred dollars, nothing. Just into bed and out. And then I woke up at like two. <laughs> I was like, my stomach was still like kind of rumbling and all that. And I was like, oh, now I went to sleep too early. What am I going to do? So there was some Skyrim over like early morning as the sun was coming up. And then I watched the, uh, I watched the first couple episodes of Disney Plus's Hawkeye, which I, I kind of enjoyed. I thought it was so far so good. Um, The character's named Clint Barnes, is that it? The the Hawkeye guy? Always been my my favorite Avenger, I think. Uh, he and Iron Man. Uh, but they kind of go with the... The... The Batman philosophy, right? You know, Superman... Well, yeah, you, you're not being heroic. You're just, you've got powers that put you like eight times over the top of everybody else. And it kind of goes with... With the rest of the Avengers, right? They, there are some that have these inherent powers that you know Thor's a god, right? An alien god, and the Hulk, obviously, and you know it, that's the whole point of Stanley and and superheroes talked about. It. They've always got to have a fatal flaw, you know. It's when he started these, it was to 
to help kids understand growing up and, and some of that kind of stuff. But for me, you know, a Batman or an Iron Man or Hawkeye, um, these are otherwise normal people that just have have some degree of skills and, and natural aptitude and then um, decide that they're going to help uh, do their part. And so I thought, oh, fun character, kind of, kind of good start. We'll see, see how it all comes out. Um, what else? Ended up being a kind of quiet day. I got my appointment for my COVID booster finally, but it's much further out, and I guess I'll still be doing the afternoon checks to see if anything last minute opens. Yeah, I knew I should have done it the one day I checked. Because um, I'd see it, it was just a bad afternoon. I had something going on. And so it really didn't work for me to do it. But I you know, was looking to get appointments and it was just like, oh, if you, you know, if you can drive 20 minutes south of here, um, you can go get one this afternoon. But I forget what I was doing that night, though. Um, but it was no, I got no time to do that. But that was that's kind of been my plan ever since. Is okay. Well, maybe you can just you know they'll free in the afternoons, and I can get something else. And since I've been looking, nothing. So who knows? It's kind of uh, the luck of the draw. I'm doing on time. Fifty one. Not bad. When we do these like two different activities, it gets a little tougher. So yeah, I got a COVID a COVID thing lined up. It is supposed to be just back to beautiful again this weekend. After a first snow, I think I told you guys about first snow, right? Got a half inch of snow on Wednesday night. On the grass only, like, and half an inch is being generous. It was not much, but when it was falling, it was these big fluffy flakes, and I went outside and uh, just a sweatshirt. It wasn't that cold, and uh, watched as like people were walking their dogs, and it's, oh, I love seeing dogs out playing in the snow. They love it as much as I do. Yeah, I, I think there are a lot of, like people in that. You know they. They get over it pretty quick. They're the ones that have to go outside to go in the bathroom for it. Uh, I got lazy. That's what we had to look for. Um, so yeah, it was uh, that was awesome. But then having yesterday be just gorgeous. Like so many times to go stand, you know, just outside and enjoy the afternoon. So nice on a, a Thanksgiving like that. Back and forth. Seems like there was other stuff that I, I had figured out to tell you guys all about after my last night, but I was I was pretty sluggish from all the turkey. I'm not gonna pretend I wasn't. Um, 
Check out the... Planned Arbalistic event. Probably, I, I think, you know, it's going to set up pretty well for two episodes. I hope. Uh, I guess that will depend on how... How long it takes us to finish these up to get back upstairs to quickly finish the, the rest of the room. And then then we can get set on the five mobs. And I it's one that I always kind of think is like, okay, yeah, we just go knock this out, and then something usually happens to make me, like, retry it all. The worst part is, if you don't get it right, you gotta grab more animals, and um, that can be a trick. But I'd, I'd like to see if the list that I provided will all work together, and if we can get them into a good space. We'll do it very similar to what we did with Zap, uh, our villager that we struck with lightning. Like we'll just set up a, a little area in that same uh, part of the base area. Haven't been up here yet. I think we'll, we may go a bit over, we may have already gone a bit over, but we'll try to get this second pick done. Pick, yeah, pick. Swinging a sword, like, is it a pick? Is that what we call it? I don't think we're going to try to worry about that one. Let's just see what we've got back here now. Close. Come on, guys. Time to get rare. <laughs> we need need lots of you. Oh, 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 oh. I guess I did specifically ask for that. And it was nice and not putting me in the lava. I don't think we're going to get this done, are we? Alright, let's get you done. We'll head back over here by our box and wrap it up right here. Because I know we won't. Cool, we'll get this pick all the way done. Well, that was a fun first uh, Black Friday. Again, we'll talk through some of that cause kind of stuff. Maybe in the next episode we got more of this time filler stuff. But... Hope you've enjoyed. I uh, definitely thank you all so much. I, there's been lots of new friends stopping by to say hi uh, along the way, so I really appreciate you guys. Uh, hope you had a great holiday or just regular old Thursday. If you did, then happy Friday. Here we are on the eve of the weekend. Some of us are in the middle of it already, but uh, we'll talk to you all soon, and uh, hope you're doing great. Stay awesome, and uh, remember, get up, get outside, move around, get that body moving. All right, see you.